Emotional numbness can happen when you are a person who has experienced something that's created like complex CPTSD or um, are trauma bonded or are coming out of something, a relationship or otherwise with a toxic person where you have had to shut down your emotional response in order to stay safe, where you have had to gray rock a whole heck of a lot, where you've had to go no contact in a really painful way when you've had emotional pain that has made it so that it's hard to uh, feel with and still function. So some of the things you might be experiencing if you have emotional numbness are you can't express your feelings. You're sort of like, you know, you're feeling something emotionally, but you don't even know the words to say to talk about what you're feeling or you think I'm just angry, but it's not just angry. There's more to it. Does that make sense? Like you can't really express the depth and the, the whole spectrum of what's going on for you. Another thing is you might feel like you can't fully participate in life, like really checked out and really hard to engage. Don't feel motivated. Don't feel like participating. Things can feel dreamlike when you're in this state of emotional numbness, um, disassociative feelings of detachment from others, detachment from any connection, dreamy, surreal. You're living on autopilot. That could be another example. You're lacking drive and interest in anything in life. Kind of goes with what I was saying earlier, but just the drive to do anything, to get up, to motivate is lacking. You might be feeling feelings of separation, inadequacy, detachment from others, lack of connection, feeling withdrawn from others. You might be feeling things in your body like tensions, stresses, discomforts, illness, aches, pains, all of that awkwardness, tingling, all these things, but have no emotional awareness of the actual emotional feeling you're having. So you might be feeling it all, processing it through your body's sensations. When there's a situation in life that you would normally have a lot of feelings for or a lot of reaction to, or say you're watching a movie and you normally tear up or say, it doesn't matter, like anything in life where you would feel normally very emotional about or even a little emotional about and you feel nothing. You just feel blank and numb and not like yourself. So how do we get here? How do we get to this place? What are we doing that is feeding this? What are we doing that's facilitating more of this happening in our lives? Okay, instead of facilitating healing from this. One thing is we check out, we use social media, we use uh, our phones, we use our computers, we, we game, we do any checkout thing that has to do with the virtual world, right? The, the checking out into the electronics. We avoid eye contact with other people. We don't connect. There is a huge energy transfer. There is emotional exchange. There's the reality of one human and another through the eye contact of another human being, right? And we avoid it so that we don't have to feel anything from anyone by not engaging, by not pushing ourselves to keep engaging in life, by not engaging, we're creating more of the feeling of not wanting to engage. It's one of those situations where if you're done with it and you want to feel again, you're going to have to start engaging. It could be baby steps. It could be things that don't involve a lot of people. It doesn't really matter. Just engaging in life. You're going to have to start finding joy and seeking things in your life that you want in your life in order to bring back the emotional responses that are more normal and natural for you. Um, <clears throat> another way we show that we're ha we have not a lot of emotional feelings going on or a numbness going on, but also adds to it is sort of a dull, flat, sad affect. If we talk sad, we're going to feel sad. If we talk flat, we're going to feel flat. If we engage in things with a more energetic voice or a voice that it doesn't have to be fake, but you know what I mean? Just a little more energy in order to show yourself that that's where you want to be and that you want to feel again it's helpful. Another thing that people may notice, you may notice, whatever, is you're kind of spaced out or really spaced out, very detached, very checked out, hard to focus, kind of not really, you're just not engaged with, with what's going on around you. You're not present. Another thing you might notice, okay, here's one that is interesting. You might be smiling at everything. You might be covering it all up with a big smile and you don't even really know you're doing it. You're just smiling. A lot of people smile and laugh as a, as a way to avoid what they're feeling. Um, 
that's not to say it's bad to smile and laugh. It's to say that if that is you and you use that to avoid what you're feeling, it's okay to take a deep breath and feel the other stuff too. It might be necessary. Uh, we use food. We eat or we don't eat. We use food to control our emotions. I mean, emotional eating is a thing and it's real. Poor sleep health happens when we're emotionally numb. How are you going to process? We have to process our emotions. We have to feel them and move through them. That's part of being human. How are you going to get good sleep if you're if it's all blocked up and it's not able to process? Because when you go to sleep, your mind is still racing. Your mind is not letting itself calm down and relax. So this is a whole lot of like, yuck, I don't want to feel like this. How, what do I do about it? Let's talk about that now. We got to remember we're doing all this to protect ourselves from further emotional pain. We're doing this when we are numb and checked out and spaced out and detached from our emotions to keep ourselves isolated and separate from things that could hurt us. So let's talk about how to help. First, you got to want to feel. You got to want to re-engage in life, right? A little bit. If you're not ready, then you're not ready. If you are ready, here are some tips. Start by thinking about your life and what you enjoy. Tiny, tiny things. Anything that gives you normally a smile, a feeling of goodness, a feeling of lightness, a feeling of being yourself. The whole point of this is we have to come back to ourself. We have to check back in with ourself. So anything it literally could be a dew drop on a leaf anything as tiny as it is or as big as it is consider those things you don't have to feel them and you're not probably going to feel them yet you're going to look at something that used to bring you joy and it's going to make you kind of feel ugh because you're not feeling for it that's okay it's normal when you are overwhelmed when you are emotionally overstimulated overwhelmed and hurt okay it will come back Start focusing on those things a little bit every day. Look for them, seek them out. Even if you don't feel, just notice them. Oh yeah, there's that thing I, I normally like, there it is. Start bringing them into the awareness of your life. Take a deep breath and allow your body to react to it. Allow the relaxation or that joy or whatever it is to just be experienced in your body. Remember a time, any time in your life, even for a moment that you felt emotional vibrance emotionally alive, emotionally aware. Remember that. That's the sensation that you're aiming for. That's what you're looking for in life. Sh show yourself that so that when in your life, you're going out in the world and you have an experience of it for a flash, your body and your awareness can recognize it and start pulling it in as new experiences that relate back to what you're wanting. Does that make sense? If you're wanting joy, remember a time you had joy. It's not don't attach any judgment to it like oh and now i don't have it or see it was good then and now it's now let that go okay what we're doing in this practice is we're remembering the feeling and we're going oh that's what it was i wonder where more of that will come from stop answering it just ask i wonder where more of that can come from and when you're out in life and you recognize it take a deep breath let it in don't judge it and then move on it will start filling up the cup, okay? It will start filling up your awakening of your experience of good things and experience of any emotion, really. Find gratitude. Number, a tip here to find gratitude, the smallest things, have a gratitude journal, write in it, use it, include yourself in that gratitude. Just find gratitude, simple gratitude. Using mindfulness practices is another thing that can help you. There's lots and lots of mindfulness um, meditations out there. I have a couple on here that are very short. It's just me talking, no music, no extra stimulation. I talk all the way through and they're like five to seven minutes. So use them if you need them. There's a whole playlist for all five of them or whatever there are. Okay. Um, we do a lot of that in group coaching as well. I try weekly or at least every other week to give a meditation in there so that, so that that ties back. It is really important. Calming your mind down, bringing yourself into that brainwave state and allowing yourself just to be present to yourself can do wonders over time. Ask yourself what you're feeling. You can do an exercise where a couple times a day, set, set some alarms and you just ask yourself, what am I feeling? If you have no reply, that's okay. Maybe your reply is, I don't know, numb, you know, and that's a feeling. So ask yourself what you're feeling. Check in with your emotional state every now and then so that you can become more aware of yourself yet again, okay? Seek out three to five positive things in your day, every day. The thing is, the problem is, as we shut down all the, the 
toxic and block it out and shut ourselves down emotionally to it, we are also shutting the door, the door on every emotion out there. We're shutting off our own experience to joy, pleasure, happiness, and the good stuff when we're shutting the, the door on the other stuff. So if you start, try evoking things by looking for it. Look for three things that are joyful. You don't have to feel the joy. You know when something's joyful. If you see children laughing, that's joyful. There it is. I, I, I witnessed that. You are separate from it right now, sure but you can recognize it. Looking for the things you want in your life. Does that make sense? Even if you don't feel connected, connect anyway. Connect anyway. Reach out to your friends, your family that are good to you. Reach out to community. Find commonality with people in life through events or common interests. Reach out for coaching, whatever you need. Reach out, connect. It helps. Use creative expression. Find a way to creatively express your feelings. It can be a color, it can be a shape, it can be anything. If you are not creative, find a way to be creative. Literally, uh, I don't know, go and draw stick figures. It doesn't matter. Creativity isn't judged. Creativity is a flow of energy to make something external about what you're feeling on the internal. So there are times when that's the only way to really access what you're feeling is through something and you're like, wow, what is this that I just made? I have no idea what this means, but it's okay. It came through creatively and it is allowing you to process in a different way. Learn grounding techniques. We're all gonna have different things that help us feel grounded. For some people it's earth, some people it's water, for some people it's friends, it's animals, whatever it is, find ways to feel grounded. And by grounded, I mean not floating above your head, but right there present in the moment, right there with yourself, with whatever it is you're with. Sometimes it is in doing a simple task that's repetitive. If you can really get into it and do the task, cooking a meal, cleaning something, whatever, you can get into that moment just for a few moments at a time and let it ground you. There are also grounding meditations. I know I have one rooting grounding meditations that can help you get into your body. All right. Journal and write about the feelings that you do feel. Write about the confusion of the feelings. Write about not having feelings. Just journal what's going on for you. It can help you externally process what's happening on the inside through words, okay? Do positive things in your day. So one thing is to seek out the positive. Another one is to be the positive. Be the positive. You know what you enjoy. You know what you see as positive. Go do it. Go do it once a day once every other day, whatever it is, allow yourself to feel the satisfaction, the joy and the release that comes from being the positive. Change your negative thoughts. Okay, we I talked about this in a live stream the other day, but change your negative thoughts. Get those ruminating negative thoughts out of your head by pattern interrupting that, getting that out of your normal dialogue that goes on in your head stop judging yourself okay it does not help you to judge yourself you will not make a change from a place of judgment you've been judged you've been criticized did that help no it does not help it only makes you feel worse so get rid of those judging thoughts if you have a judging thought look for the truth in it is there anything about this i need to change most likely the only thing you need to change is that negative thought <laughs> right so stop judging there's techniques and all of that for stopping judging. And I'm going to, that's a whole nother topic, but focus on recognizing the judgment of yourself and recognizing the judgment of the thoughts you have about yourself, recognizing the judgment on the thoughts that you have about yourself and letting that go. Would you do it to someone else? This is the simplest technique. Would you judge someone else for having a bad day? Would you judge someone else for the pain that they've suffered at the hands of someone else? No, you would not. So stop doing it to yourself. It's it's the simplest way I can think of to convey here. But anyway, let that stuff go so that you can then focus on processing the feelings as they do come up. Allow them. Let them flow around you like water. You are a rock in a river and your emotions can flow around you and you can be safe and secure knowing that it will pass. Things will calm emotions never stay there unless we hold on to them we try so hard to hold on to the positive emotions right like so if we're really happy we're like grabbing at it like oh my gosh don't ever want to let it go or we get scared of it and go ah the other shoe's going to drop and we and we push it away really fast 
But the thing is, no matter what you do, no matter how hard you try, no emotional state is going to stay there unless you're feeding it in your own head. So if you're feeding the happiness and the positive, you'll stay pretty happy and positive for a while. If something bad will happen, sure. And then you'll go through different emotional states because of what's actually happening in your life. But the thing is, we're holding on to stuff that's happened in the past. We're holding on to things that aren't actually going on sometimes. Sometimes they are still going on. I'm not discrediting that. But sometimes it's literally we're just holding on. We've got to let that flow and process through it so that we can start feeling in real time again. So if you need help with anything, check out the information in the description of every video. I can be reached through email, through my website, all over the place. So check it out if you need it. There's group coaching and coaching available if you need that as well. If you have any questions or comments, let me know what you think in the main comment section of every video. I will be back next time. Take care. Again, my name is Lise Colucci. Bye-bye.